fiery horse with the speed of light, a clot of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hey! Gus Baxter and his friend Joe Dunn had recently completed terms in the state penitentiary and, being short of funds, were biding their time in the town of Clearwater while they made plans for the future. They were seated in front of the Antlers Hotel when the approach of a bearded prospector and his burrow attracted the attention of Gus. Hey, Joe. Yeah, Gus? See that old prospector coming? Yeah, what about him? That's Sagebrush Kelly. Sagebrush Hi. Kelly? Yeah. Hi. Ever heard of him? Seems like I have. Just don't quite remember. What about him? He spent half his life looking for a lost mine. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Now I remember. He calls it the Golconda or something like that, don't he? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Spaniards are supposed to have found it a couple of hundred years ago. If they found it, then it's not lost. It's claimed that the Spaniards who found it were killed by the Indians who sealed it up. Yeah? Well, I don't believe those stories. There's no gold within 50 miles, maybe more than that. The old miners bomb. Yeah, I'm not so sure of that, Joe. He's going into the general store. Let's go and hear what he has to say. All right. Don't let on that we know who he is. I won't. Yeah, here's your sugar. Now, Sagebrush, what else do you need? Well, now, let me think. Uh, something else I had to get, but it skipped my mind. Well, uh, you've got sugar. Yeah. Salt. Uh, coffee. Uh, bacon and beans. Yep, yeah, and here's the dynamite and fuse, but there's something else I gotta get. Well, you think what it is, I'll wait on these two gents. Uh, uh, what can I do for you, gents? Oh, we're in no hurry. We got plenty of time. Oh, no, I remember what it was. Yeah, it comes to me now. All right, what is it? Sardines. Yeah, they've got two kinds, cheap ones and good ones. What you want? Yeah, give me the cheap kind. It's for my cat, Matilda. Oh, <laughs> for your cat, huh? Yep. Well, Matilda likes sardines. I try to keep them on hand. How many do you want? Oh, a dozen cans would be enough, I reckon. There you are. Here you are. Now, is that all? Yep, that'll be all. Now, just give me the tally on the lot. Well, it uh, comes to $16.50. Well, take it out of this and give me the change in money. Raw gold. 
Why, that's the first raw gold I've seen around here in 15 or 20 years. Get up and give me the change. Well, well, let's see what the scales say. Come nigh to $100, providing it assays pure gold. It will. I know pure gold when I see it. I'll take your word for it. Here's your change. 17, 20, 40... 60, 80, 100. Much obliged. Now, if you'll pack up my stuff in these sacks I brought along, I'll get down to the claim office. I'll pick up the sacks when I get back. Claim office? There hasn't been a claim office in Clearwater for 15 years. The nearest one's in the town of Sundown. That's 60 miles from here. Yep, I know where it is. Well, I guess I'll go get a haircut if there's a barber in town. Well, there is. Your shop's on the other side of the street, about four doors south of the Longhorn Cafe. Well, I'll go there. You have my stuff packed when I get back. Pack as soon as I can carry it on my burrow. Uh, now, gents, what can I do for you? I guess we've changed our minds. Yeah. You mean you don't want to buy anything at all? That's right. Come on, Joe, we got to go someplace. Now, hold on a minute. Huh? Haven't I seen you two gents somewhere? Nah. We're strangers in this part of the country. You sure of that? You heard what my pal said. Come on, Gus, let's shove on. Doggone it, I could swear I've seen those two faces somewhere. It's downright strange. I never forget a face. And on the other hand, men don't look familiar to me unless I've seen him somewhere before. Sagebrush finished his business in the town of Clearwater and started back toward the distant hills. Joe and Gus left town, too. But the memory of their faces remained to haunt the storekeeper. He was sure he had seen the two on some previous occasion. And finally, he remembered. By thunder. Now I remember where I've seen those two. I've got to go tell the sheriff right away. Not this one. Not this one. Not this one. Where? What in tarnation's got into you, Jed? Why'd you want to look through all my handbills for wanted men? Here they are, Sheriff. Here's the two men I saw. I remember them from when this handbill was posted in your office. (laughs) Gus Baxter and Joe Dunn, huh? Yeah, they were captured a long time ago. They went to jail. Well, they're out of jail now. They were here in town a little while ago. And, Sheriff, they acted downright suspicious. How do you mean? They acted like they were too doggone interested in some gold old Sagebrush Kelly brought into my store. Maybe they escaped from jail. Huh. Maybe they did. That being the case, Sheriff, something ought to be done about it. Later the same day, the Lone Ranger, his nephew Dan Reed, and the Indian named Tonto were camped in the hills a few miles from Clearwater. They had finished eating when the masked man's horse, Silver, showed signs of nervousness. Oh, Silver, whoa! Well, what matter is you, Silver? He must hear something, Tonto. Steady, big fella. Look at his nostrils. He scented something. Ah, uh, maybe mountain lion. A mountain lion wouldn't come this close to camp. Hey, look! It's a cat. <laughs> and that house cat, not bobcat. Steady, <laughs> Silver. Nothing to get excited about. Now, where did that cat come from? No ranches or houses in these hills. Here, kitty. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. kitty. Cat hungry. It kitty. smell food. And come here. No doubt of it, Toto. A cat no, like kitty. raw meat. Uh, here, Dan. You give it me. Oh, sure. Let me give it to him. Here, Kitty. That's a mother cat, Dan. Hey. Hey, come back, Kitty. Can you beat that? She grabbed that meat and started off with it. She probably has kittens somewhere. She's taking the food to them. Kittens? Yes, they're near here somewhere. She smelled food and came to get it for them. Otherwise, she would have eaten it herself. I'm going to follow her and find out where they are. I'll take some meat for them. You better hurry, Dan, or she'll get out of sight. I can keep up with her. I'll be back when I find out where they are. At first, Dan had no difficulty in following the cat through underbrush. Then the land became more rugged and the brush grew thicker. His clothes were disheveled and his hands scratched. But he was determined to find the litter of kittens. Finally, he came into a small clearing high up on the side of the mountain. Oh, how much farther do we have to go, Kitty? I'm all in. How about stopping for a rest? Just a minute there, young fella. Who said that? I did. Oh, you startled me. I, I didn't see you. I know you didn't. Who are you? My name's Stan Reed. What are you doing up here? I, I followed that cat up here. She came to our camp looking for food. You were camp? Where is it? Oh, over there beyond the ridge. We camped with friends. 
Did they send you up here to snoop around? No, of course not. I, I told you why I came here. I don't believe you. But I'm telling the truth. Well, see this meat? I, I was bringing it to feed the kittens. How do you know Matilda's got kittens? Well, she came to our camp and we gave her some food. She grabbed it and brought it here. So we guessed she had kittens she wanted to feed. You made up that story mighty quick, didn't you, Sonny? What makes you think I made it up? If you know Matilda's got kittens, it proves you've been snooping around here while I was in town today. I've got no reason to snoop around here. What have you got to hide? Don't you get sassy with me, Button. I'm asking the questions. Now I want to know more about these friends of yours. As Dan tried to explain to the suspicious old prospector that he had been prompted by purely humanitarian motives, two men on horseback came up through the draw at the base of the mountain. Can you still make out the hoop prints of that burrow, Gus? I've lost him myself. Yeah. Pick up a hoof mark now and then. Good enough to know we haven't lost the trail of the old coot. You've got better eyes than I have. Now you keep your eyes peeled ahead of us. I'll follow the tracks. We don't want to run into Sagebrush Kelly unexpected. He'll open up on us with a rifle. Yeah, I reckon so. Gus. Huh? Think that storekeeper got suspicious of us when we were in there today? Nah, he didn't pay us any heed. I cut out the gab and keep a watch for Sagebrush Kelly. I got a hunch we're getting close to him. And if he sees us first, he may get the drop on us. Right. Get him. Come on. Get up. Now, I've told you all I can, mister. I didn't come up here snooping around. If you want me to, I'll go get my friends and they'll back up what I told you. Never you mind. You just clear out of here and stay out. Tell your friends that if they come snooping, they'll get a bullet through them. I'll tell them. But I'm sure they're not interested. Hold on there, sonny. What? I just heard hoofbeats on the rocks down there. Hoofbeats? Yep. Take a look down there. See them two horsemen? Are they you, friends? No. No, I never saw him before. One of my friends is an Indian. Those are both white men. They're stopping and looking up here. There's something familiar about them, too. You've seen them before? Yep, I have. Today in town. They were in the store at Clearwater. You stay here. I'm going to get my rifle. They're aiming rifles at us. Hey, get to cover, get to hey, cover. Come here, you. Hey, let go of me. They'll hit us. You're going with me, sonny. Now, come on. Hey, what's the idea? Shut up. They come. Hey, let go of me. If they're your pals, they'll hold their fire as long as I've got hey, you. Uh, now, come on. Hello. Did you hear those shots? Ah, uh, me hear them. They came from over the ridge. That's the direction Dan took when he left camp. Isn't that right? We'd better investigate. He may have run into trouble. Here, Silver. Come, Scout. Um, me saddle horse. I'll help you. Send a big fella. Easy, Easy, Scout. Easy, Scout. Blanket straight. All right, your cinch, big fella. Easy. Under. Yeah. That does it. Now your throat latch. Ready? All right, ready, Tonto? Ready, Tonto? Uh, be ready. One, two, and up, Scout. See anything of them, Joe? No, they just disappeared into thin air. I told you to keep your eyes on them. Next thing we know, that old coot will open up with a rifle. He must be hid in the bush around here. Let's take a look around. Right. That's it. Steady, boy. Hey. I'd like to know who that kid is. Me too. He didn't act like he wanted to go with Sagebrush when he took the cover. Yeah, keep your gun ready and shoot at the first thing that moves. Yeah, I will. Hey, you see something moving down there just ahead of us? Yeah, I'll get him. You missed him. Come on, Joe. Yeah. After him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Gus Baxter and Joe Dunn were searching for Sagebrush Kelly and Dan Reed when they saw something move in the underbrush. Joe Dunn fired point blank with his six gun, but the object moved quickly and they started in pursuit. Hey, you couldn't hit a barn, Joe. I fired point blank at it, whatever it was. Yeah, you didn't hit it, though. Hey, hey, hold up. What's the matter? You know what you were shooting at? Well, I didn't see anything. Only saw something move in the brush. <laughs> you see that cat yonder? <laughs> That's what you were shooting at. Why, oh, the ornery crit. I'll get and lay off. We didn't come up here to shoot cats. Save you that we may need it. I'd like... Hey, I heard something right over there in that thicket. Yeah, I heard it too. Ah, it's the old man's burrow. Ah, yeah, yeah, I can make it out now. The old man hasn't had time to take off the pack saddle. Now, let's find Sagebrush and the kid. They gotta be around here somewhere. Yeah, they're probably laying for us with a rifle. You know, Joe, I, I got a hunch. Hunch? Yeah. If that old critter did find the lost Golconda mine, it's got a secret entrance. If that's the case, they're inside of it right now. And let's find the secret entrance. Yeah, that's easy said. A lot of folks have tried to find it for more than 200 years. Yeah, but come on, we'll look around. That's what we're here for. Hey, Gus. Yeah? Do you hear horses? Yeah, I do. They're coming this way, too. I see them now. Look, way down there in the valley. Two hombres riding this way. You see them? Yeah. A white horse and a paint. Hey, ain't that big fellow wearing a mask? Yeah, he is. And the other's an Indian. Joe, them's a pair that put us in state's prison two years ago. Huh? That's a Lone Ranger and his Indian friend. Well, I'll be... Say, Gus, this is our chance to square the deal. We'll pick them off as they ride up here. Yeah, wait, Joe. First, let's get our horses to cover. We have plenty of chance to wing them off. But I want to find out what they're up to. Now, come on, but don't let them see you. Meanwhile, just as Gus and Joe had suspected, Sagebrush had led Dan through a crevice in the towering cliff, which was actually the entrance to a hidden mine tunnel. Now in its safety, Dan and Sagebrush had quickly come to know each other better. Why in thunder didn't you tell me your friend was a low ranger? Because I didn't know who you were. You acted so strangely, you might have been abandoned. Oh, Dan, I'm just a harmless old prospector. And why did those two men try to kill us? I've got it figured out. See, everybody knows I've been looking for the lost gold condom mine for 20 years. They figured I'd found it, and they were going to kill me and jump my claim. Is this the lost gold condom? I thought it was when I ran into it a week ago. But it's not. All there is here is this old tunnel. It's not worth the effort to work it. <laughs> I, I was just waiting until Matilda's kittens got a little bigger before I moved on. I reckoned it was about time I got some sense in my head and quit looking for the lost gold condor. Hey, I heard something. Oh, <laughs> that's just Matilda coming into her kittens. <laughs> I see her now. I guess I'm jumpy. Here, kitty. Here, kitty. Come here. Uh, she's scared about something. Look how big her tail is. Yeah, those men must have scared her. See, Dan. I hear somebody coming. Yeah, so do I. They found the entrance. Well, hand me my rifle. Here it is. I'd be ready for him. Now put out that kid. Right. Henry! Hey, listen. She he called your name. Henry! Here I am, back in the tunnel. Say, what are you up to? That's the Lone Ranger. He's found us. But how did you find us, sir? Helen and I saw the cat outside. She seemed frightened, and when she ran, we followed her. She led us to the entrance of the tunnel. But didn't you see them two critters outside? Who do you mean? Dan and Sagebrush Kelly quickly told what had happened, and the old prospector explained why he thought he and Dan had been shot at. No, we didn't see them. They must have hidden when Todd and I rode up. That bad. Them wait for us to come out of mine. Them shoot us from ambush. Sagebrush, is there another way out of this mine? Nope. I've examined every inch of it. There's just one way in and out. They've got it covered. Hey. 
you have. Golly. They've dynamited the entrance. They've sealed us up. Come on, the entrance may not be completely closed. Sagebrush, where'd they get dynamite? Uh, I bought it in town today. It was on my burrow. They must have found it. <coughs> Dust I can hardly breathe. <coughs> Slow down. <coughs> I can't see any light coming through. Well, neither can I. We're sealed up, just like in a coffin. Sagebrush, you must have a pick and shovel in here. We can try to dig our way out. You're wrong about that. But you're a prospector. Yes, I know. But I was fixing to pull out of these diggings, as I told Dan. I took my mining gear outside to put on the pack saddle less than 30 minutes ago. Uh, what we do, Kimasabi? Right now, let's get back out of this dust. We'll be able to think where the air is better. Come on, all of you. Uh. say is that we don't seem to be thinking out any solution to our problem. I don't see how we're going to get out of here. Neither do I, Dan. But I was in hopes that your mass friend would come up with some idea. What are you looking at? Who, me? No. I've been watching Matilda's kitten. What in tarnation of the kitten's got to do with it? Matilda had a number of kittens, didn't she? Well, she sure she did. Seven of them. What about it? Here we set face in slow death by starvation and something sealed up inside a mine and you're wondering how many kittens Matilda had. Where are they, Sagebrush? Why, where are they? Why, right over there. There's one of them there. <laughs> Dad, right it. There were seven of them. Where'd the other six go? They was too little to wander away by themselves. Oh, they're old cats. Hey, Matilda, where have you been? Where's the rest of your family? Now, wait a minute, Sagebrush. Just watch her. Animal instinct is a wonderful thing. Sometimes when a mother cat is greatly disturbed, she'll move her kittens to a safer place. She's picking up the last one right now. I wonder where she's going to take it. Come with me, Dan. Bring the candle. I'm right with you. Yeah, I'm going too. We all follow cat. Look, she's going into a crevice. Yep. It's no bigger than your foot. Only a cat could get through it. Cat gone now, and we not follow it. You're no better off now than we was before. Dan, let me have that candle. Here it is, sir. Oh, thanks. Hey, look here, Sagebrush. Yeah, what do you see? This is a slab of granite. It's not like the other rock formation in this tunnel. See, by golly, you're right. Why, it looks like a door. The explosion and its impact on the air has loosened it. Here, Dan, take the candle. Right. Follow. Uh -huh. Let me do. Put your shoulder to the slab. Uh, now together. Uh, Look out. Jump, Colonel. Uh, uh, it is a door. Well, of all things. And Matilda found it. All right, everybody, follow me. Yes. Golly, a big room. It looks like the inside of a church. Hey, will you look at it? It's streaked with veins of gold, pure gold. Why, well, it's a lost gold conjure I've been looking for for half my life. <laughs> yes, and now it's not worth a doggone cent to any of it. How do you think you can see in here, Sagebrush? See, why, the candle Dan's holding. No, there's more light than that. It's coming from up above us. See? See a hole. Just big enough for a man to crawl through. And here, old ladder. Indians make it long time ago. Matilda and her kittens have been our salvation. As the sheriff and his party drew their horses to a halt, they saw Scott and Silver standing where the Lone Ranger and Tonto had left them. The sheriff and Jed thought the horses belonged to the outlaws. Uh, they wasn't riding them horses when they left Clearwater, Chef. I know they weren't, Jed. I wonder whose horses these are. That white one's about the finest stallion I ever saw. There's something familiar about him. I'd swear I'd seen him before. Let's look him over. Stand up. Stay away. Get your hands up. What the? Hey, it's them. Yeah, it's us. We saw you trail us with them bloodhounds. Come on, Joe, keep him covered. Right. Where's Sagebrush Kelly? If you kill that old prospector, you'll hang for it, both of you. <laughs> we didn't exactly kill him, Sheriff, but I reckon he's as good as dead. And so is the masked man and the others who are with him. What do you mean? Well, right now, they're all sealed up tight inside the tunnel. And unless I miss my guess, they'll starve to death uh, in there. Sheriff, look. Huh? 
Oh. <laughs> uh, I reckon everything is going to be all right, eh, Jed? Watch him, Gus. Oh. Looking over our shoulders, trying to make us think someone's coming up behind us. That trick's so old, he's got whiskers on it. Now, you two got anything to say before we open fire? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd bet two to one you don't get a chance to fire that gun, you skunk. I'll take that bet. Oh, oh. Get your hands up. A mass man. Slug him, Joe. Oh, you don't. Good work, tell him. Hey, we quit. Wake him up. Wake him up. There we go. Well, Sheriff, I guess you have everything in hand now. Dan and Todd and I'll ride back to our camp. It's just over the ridge there. Yep, I can take care of them from now on. And Jed and me are mighty obliged to you for what you did. We sure are. We'd have been goners if you hadn't showed up when you did. Oh, them bloodhounds wouldn't have done you no good. As far as I'm concerned, they're not worth a keep. Takes a good cat like Matilda to help a fella out. Hey, stop that bike. Get that cat off them dogs. You just try it, Jed Foster. <laughs> Matilda don't want no bloodhounds hanging around here. And from now on, what Matilda wants, she gets. <laughs> <laughs> Adios, Sagebrush. Uh, adios, my friend. Adios, Dan, Toto. Bye, Sagebrush. Adios. You ride with me, Dan. Uh, up you go. Uh, Come on, Silver. Get him up. Uh, you know, Jed, I told you that white stallion was familiar to me. I knew I'd seen him before. Then you must know that masked man if you know his horse. Sure, I know him. He's the best friend the law in the West ever had. Hey, uh, Jed Foster, he's a lone ranger. I'm This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.